Hello everyone, welcome to the lecture 13 of Console Multiphysics training course. Today we continue on the modeling of triboelectric nanogenerators or TNG by Console. So let's begin. Okay, so as you remember, TNG is a novel technology for mechanical to electrical energy conversion based on the contact electrification and electrostatic induction. We have explained that in detail in the previous video. As you may remember, the key parameters for the TNG is the contact materials, surface properties, and the structural design. This is a sample of TNG operation based on the contact and separation mode of two dielectric materials. We also explained that we have four different modes of working for the TNG, namely contact separation, sliding mode, single electrode, and freestanding. We modeled the sliding mode in the previous video when we have the contact of two dielectrics. We explained that the main output characteristics of a TNG are the open circuit voltage and short circuit transfer charge. And we explained that we can find these two parameters or these two output characteristics by console. The thing is, when we have these two parameters, we can find other outputs of the systems based on formula and also mathematical calculations. In this video, we are going to study the case that we have the contact of a metal and a dielectric. As you remember from the previous video, for a dielectric to dielectric contact, we could simply use a positive and negative surface charge density on the contact surfaces and they can cancel out each other when they are in full contact, which makes charge conservation. However, we will see that in a metal and dielectric system, in order to keep the charge conservation, we have to manipulate our boundary conditions a little bit. So it is very important. We are going to model the single electrode mode and compare it with the contact separation mode. In fact, we are covering two other working operations and we finally find the open circuit voltage and short circuit transfer charge by console. Here is the model that we are going to use and this is selected based on this reference and we selected this case because it has both the single electrode mode and the contact separation mode. This figure shows the operation of single electrode mode under the form of contact of a dielectric and a metal. As you see, the dielectric can freely touches and separates the other contact material which in this case is a metal which causes charge flow to a reference electrode. This is the working mechanism of a single electrode mode TNG. You can find more information on internet or simply in this reference. These are the values and parameters that we use for this case. And we are going to find some results such as the electric potential distribution as the dielectric gets away from the contact electrode. Also, we are going to find the output of the system, which is the open circuit voltage for the single electrode and for the pair electrode. In this case, pair electrode means the contact separation mode. In fact, we assume that instead of a reference electrode, there is an electrode on the back of dielectric so that when we contact and separate, there is a circuit between the back electrode and the contact material, which is a metal in this case. In fact, when we have one contact material as a metal, we can use it or consider it as an electrode as well. But remember, we need at least one dielectric or one insulator in our system to keep the charges on the surface, as you may remember from the previous video. So we are going to find the outputs for a single electrode mode and for the contact separation mode. We want to see if we get these results. And also we will find the short circuit transfer charge for both the single electrode mode and the contact separation mode. We will further look into the results and we will see that for the case that we have open circuit condition, which means that the resistive load is infinity, we get something around 300. So we are expecting a number of about 300 volts for the single electrode, something around 4 kilovolts for the paired electrode. Also, for the transfer charge, we expect this behavior for the contact separation mode and this behavior, which is nearly around 80 picocoulombs for the single electrode. So remember these numbers and graphs and we will see if we can get this result as the main output of the two systems. In fact, if we cover these two examples, in addition to the previous case, we covered most of the cases for the TNG and other systems can be modeled with the same analogy. Okay, so let's begin. Okay, 
So as usual, we start with the model wizard and then 2D and then we can use electrostatics. So we go to electrostatics, add, and then we use a stationary. Like I said, you can also use time dependent when you want to model the effect of the speed of motion. But in here, for simplicity, we use the stationary mode. Now we have to start modeling. I want to start with defining a parameter like Y1, and I will use that in the future. I'm going to use a very small number like 5 e minus 7, and the unit is meter. So I will tell you how we can use this parameter in the future. This is an arbitrary number, but it has to be very small. Okay, now we go to the geometry. In the geometry, I'm going to change everything to millimeter. Then right click. First, we need to make the surrounding domain. So for the V, I know 25 millimeter and 35 millimeters. The reason I'm selecting is I want to make it very large. So these are just some large numbers to surround our domain. Then build selected. But before build selected, I also want to add layers for the infinite domain. And it is one millimeter and then build selected. There you go. This is our surrounding domain. Before we continue, we can define the neighborhoods or the outer layers as infinite domains to set up infinite boundary condition. So let me do it quickly like this, or I can just put it down and make it larger so you can see that clearly. So that's it. We go back to the geometry. First, we want to make the reference electrode, name it as ref or reference, whatever. We know that the reference electrode, based on the information from the paper that used as our reference, is 5 millimeters. And the height, we are using a metal, which was very thin, so it will be 0 0.001, so build selected, and there we go. That's our electrode, which is very thin, like a thin layer metal exact same as the model we have from the reference or in fact we use the numbers over there then i'm gonna use the contact electrode which is also metal or the contact material which is a metal so another rectangle i can call it as metal and the width is five millimeters same as this size and it is also very thin however we have to shift it upward or there should be a gap between the reference electrode and the contact electrode. So for this case, again, based on the reference, it is one millimeter on top. So I'm going to use 1.001 because we also need to consider the thickness of this reference electrode to make one millimeter gap. So that's it, right? And finally, we are going to make the dielectric. So dielectric one and the width is five millimeter the height or the thickness now is thicker so it is 0.1 millimeter the position in x direction is zero in y direction is 1.002 which also considers the distance or the thickness of the two electrodes plus y1 you remember i defined y1 as a tiny gap and i will tell you why i defined that so I click on build selected and build all. So let me zoom in and see what's going on in the contact region. So as you see, there is a very tiny gap between the contact metal and the dielectric. And this is because I want to define the boundary conditions and I need a very tiny gap. If I attach them together, then I cannot have two separate boundaries, which doesn't change our result significantly. And it is actually useful and you can see the final result is very similar let's see okay so we are good with the geometry and now we can go to the materials right click add material from library then i'm gonna select air and then add to component the air is assigned to the whole geometry so i'm gonna remove the geometries that i don't want to be as air we select this one and the two electrodes, this one, and finally 
the reference electrode, right? It all makes sense. And then that's it. And finally, we have to define the two other materials. For the contact metals or the reference metal as well, I'm gonna add copper, which is good for our case. So add the component. Now I can close the material library. For copper, I select the reference electrode and also I can select the contact material. In practical systems, copper is a very useful material for the TNG applications. That's why I'm using copper. And finally, our dielectric material, I'm gonna use a blank material, select the domain, and we need the relative permittivity. And based on the reference, the value is two. So we are all set with our material definitions. Now we go to the electrostatics. We know that the depth or the other dimension of our system is five millimeter. So I'm gonna use 0.005 as the depth, right? We know that again from our reference. In fact, in 3D imagination, it's a five by five millimeter system, as you can imagine, right? Now we have to define the boundary conditions, which is the important case for our system. Okay, so let's right click for the dielectric you need to define a surface charge density which is given in the problem and we are going to select the top contact layer of the dielectric as you see and the number we know that from the reference it is 8 micro coulomb per meter squared this is a number that is given by reference for practical cases it could be different or normally it is a smaller but we're just going to use the same number in the paper so we have minus 8e minus 6. Why minus? Because we suppose that the dielectric has negative tribopolarity in contact with the metal. So that we're going to get negative charges on the top layer. Right? Now we right click. And here is the important part for a metal as a contact material. We cannot use a surface charge density because a metal is a conductor with free charges. So we cannot imagine that we have charges stored on top layer. One assumption is to use a floating potential as the whole domain or we can simply use a floating potential as the boundary condition. Either one may work. But for now, let's use a floating potential and then select the top layer and we need to know what the value of charge is. This is very important. The charge conservation is a must in the model. We need to ensure that the charges cancel out each other when they are in full contact, right? So how can we calculate that? We know that the charge density is eight microcoulombs per meter squared, and we need a charge in here. So why not we turn it into a charge? So we know the area is 0 0.005 times 0 0.005, times the charge density, 8e minus 6. So in fact, this is the contact area, 5 millimeter by 5 millimeter. 5 millimeter is seen as the X direction, and the other one is the depth, which we cannot see, but we selected that as the out of plane dimension. And it is positive because we have positive tribal polarity. It makes sense, right? So this is very important because in other cases, imagine you have a complicated system with interdigitated electrodes. So you have to divide for each interdigitated electrode. So keep it in mind in the case you are modeling that system. Okay, so we are good with the boundary condition on the metal. Now we have to assign the boundary conditions for our electrodes or for our open circuit condition and short circuit condition. So for the open circuit condition, we know that we can use the floating potential again. So I'm going to use a floating potential I used in the back of the electrode and I'm going to define another one on the back of the other one. In fact, as you may remember from the previous case, we use that for our electrodes, right? For the open circuit condition. So I'm going to use top layer. Doesn't matter, not a big difference. So now we have the case that gives us the open circuit condition the two floating potentials with zero charge and we also have the surface charge density and the charge on the surface of the contact metal. One more time, I'm gonna repeat that. 
in the metal dielectric system, the contact metal could also be used as the electrode which the charge are transferred between the other electrode. Okay, that's it. So we are all done with the boundary conditions, but we need something to add for the final step, which is our ground. Remember, if we don't use a ground, we will get an error. So right click and then we will define a ground. The ground is the reference, right? So we click on the outer there in the infinity, which is the ground, right? So we are all set with that. We just need to select the top ones and that's it. So we have assigned the ground in the infinity, which makes sense. Now we are good with the physics and electrostatics and we need to do the mesh. Remember, in this case we have a huge domain with some very thin layers embedded into the domain. So the meshing may take a little bit longer than normal time. Software should adjust the thin layer and the large domain. So one way is to use the user defined mesh to make it specifically for these layers and the whole domain. But for simplicity and because in this problem we are not focusing on the meshing, we're just gonna use physics control mesh and the normal. I'm gonna click on build all and wait while the meshing is done. Okay, let's do that. Okay, so now the meshing is done and as expected, we have very small meshes on a thin film for thin layer contact metals and reference metals and also we have large meshes on the outer domain okay let's continue with that i'm gonna right click on study and then add parametric sweep why parametric sweep because we are going to change a geometry and as you remember from the previous video to change a geometry let's use the parameter sweep so i'm gonna click on plus and y1 is the only parameter so we have it then we need to define a range for that. So we start from the starting point, which is five e minus seven, as you remember. And then we have a range of one millimeter. And finally, we go to 0 0.2 meter, which is actually our final stage or final location. So as you see, we start from a very tiny gap, and then we change from 0 0.001 and then to 0.02, right? The final distance for the largest gap is two centimeters. That's it, right? So here is the range that we are going to use. And now I'm gonna click on compute and wait for calculation. It may take a while, so let's see what we get. Okay, now the problem is solved and we want to compare our results with the results of our reference. The first thing, was the potential distribution. I'm gonna zoom out and then right click on export and then animation and player and that's it. I'm gonna make a video and see how changing the gap will change the potential distribution. If I click on play and wait for a few seconds, we can get that video. And then we compare with different stages as shown in the presentation, okay? So as you see, the electric potential starts from zero when the layers are in contact and then by increasing the distance we get more potential distribution for example we have the case a five millimeter gap and also one centimeter gap right and eventually we have the maximum gap good but now we want to get the open circuit voltage between the two electrodes which is our important case for the model of this case which is the open circuit condition how we can find that for the single electrode mode, we can define that as the difference between the potential of the reference electrode and the contact electrode. How can we do that? Let's go to the dataset and then right click and then define a cut line 2D. And for the cut line 2D, I'm going to use the surface of the reference electrode, which is here. So we have X0. And then y is 0 0.001 millimeter and then we have five with the same height bounded by points so we're gonna make a cut line on the top layer so we plot and as you see we place the cut line on the top of the reference electrode as the first cut line okay now i can duplicate and use 
the other one. For this one, let's change the name to refs1 and for this one to contact1. Okay, and now we have to adjust the Y and for this case, let's use the bottom of the electrode or the contact material on top, which is 1001 and 1001, right? As you see, we have the bottom of this electrode as selected in here. So now we want to find the potential difference between the reference electrode and the contact electrode as the open circuit voltage. So we have to define the difference between the electric potential, right? Before doing that, remember to change the data set to parametric solution. Otherwise, you will get only one point, right? Then same thing for the contact layer. So we change it to parametric solution. So we are good. Now let's define a join. And in the join, we actually find the potential difference between the reference electrode and the contact electrode as the open circuit voltage. So I'm gonna select ref or contact, as a matter, all, and then ref, and then all, right? That's it. Now we go to the derived values. We right click, we use average, Y average, because the voltage is equal on a conductive material, right? Now in data set, we are going to use join one. And what is the expression? We go to electrostatics and then we click on electric potential. In fact, it finds the potential difference between the reference electrode and the contact electrode. That's it. And then we click on evaluate and wait for the calculation. Okay, the calculation is done. Now we want to plot it and see if we get the same results. So we right click and then 1D plot group. In the 1D plot group, we right click table graph. And as we have only one table created from this line average, we have only one option. Okay, now we click on plot. And there you go. This is the result we have. Changing from zero to around 300 volts, exactly same as the result we showed in the presentation. So it shows that our model is okay, right? Now let's model the short circuit condition and compare the short circuit transfer chart. So we go back to electrostatics and then we can add two grounds in here. And we also disable our floating potential. For the first ground, I'm gonna select the bottom of the contact electrode, right? And for the other one, we go to the reference electrode and select the surface of the reference electrode. As you see, we set the voltage of the reference electrode and the contact electrode as zero, which means that we have the short circuit condition. What we can do, we can go to mesh, fill all, and now go to a study and click on parametric sweep and compute to calculate the case that we have the short circuit condition. Let's do that. Okay, now the case for the short circuit condition is also solved and we need to derive the transfer charge in the short circuit condition between the reference electrode and the contact electrode. Okay, I'm gonna right click on derived values and then use line integration. And you remember from the previous video why we use the line integration? Because we want to accumulate all the charge transfer, right? So I'm gonna zoom in and then click on the top layer that we grounded. And then in here, we have to find the variable that we are going to calculate. So we go to electrostatic, constant charge, and surface charge density, right? I'm gonna close this table. And in here, I have to multiply by the depth to make it as charge, okay? So I'm gonna use 0 0.005 meter times the charge density, which gives us the charge, okay? I'm gonna use this as ref charge just for simplicity and now i'm going to click on evaluate and see what we get 
as you see we get only one number because we didn't change it to parameter sweep so i'm gonna do it again evaluate and then override and see what we get okay that's what we got in this electrode we have to do the same thing for the electrode or the back of the contact metal so we go there and in here we can simply right click duplicate and then remove this click that one and that's it i'm gonna close this table and also change this to contact charge okay and then click on evaluate right as you see another column is added in table 2 with negative values so now to find the transfer charge we have to calculate the difference between them in fact we have to find the summation between them because one is positive and the other is negative in order to do this we can take this table out we can export it and do it in other software or let's find it in here I'm just gonna try if I use integration line integration and in here select the two boundaries which is the back of the electrode and also the reference electrode and I'm gonna close this table and in here I'm gonna use surface charge density and then use 0 0.005 meter in fact we are using the charge integration function then we have the two electrodes added and now we can click on evaluate again we have to change it parametric sweep and then overwrite and we get some negative values which gives us a curve with negative sign so i'm gonna use a negative here and also we can delete table 3 because we don't want to repeat that and now we go to line integration and evaluate right now if we go back to our table graph and here i don't want to plot the table of voltage so i'm going to change it to table 3 and then plot and there you go this is what we got right something near to 80 pico coulombs okay so now we got this graph for the short circuit transfer charge for our single electrode case and as you see it is around 80 pico coulombs right which is same as what we got in our reference so now we could find both the open circuit condition and the short circuit condition results and we compared it with our reference which is very close to each other let's do the contact separation mode okay okay to model the contact separation mode we have to do some adjustments in our geometry so I'm gonna go back to our geometry and see what we got. So we have one dielectric, the contact metal, and we have a reference electrode. So we can simply place this reference electrode on the back of the dielectric to make the contact separation mode when we have a dielectric in contact with a metal, right? Very easy. So I'm gonna go back to the reference and in here, I'm gonna change it to another name like top electrode or any other name that you want to use and we have to adjust the position so we are going to use a new number which is 0.1 the thickness of the dielectric and the gap and finally y1 okay so build selected and then build all so we get this as you see we have the bottom contact material the dielectric contact material and the electrode placed at the back in touch with the dielectric we model the contact separation mode for the case of metal to dielectric contact so we are all set let's see what we get with the materials we have air we have copper on top and bottom right and then we have the material as the dielectric so we are all good we go to the electrostatics and now we have to model the open circuit condition so let me disable the ground and then disable and enable our floating potential so i'm gonna enable this one and enable the other one so in fact we have one floating potential 
and also disable this okay now for this floating potential as you see it is placed on the back of the top electrode right and we have another floating potential on the back of the contact electrode or the bottom electrode right so we are good we have the floating potential located on top and bottom electrodes mimicking the open circuit condition and let's see what charges we have here we didn't change anything in here we have the floating potential on the contact layer and the surface charge density so we are all set with the boundary conditions and we have the ground as the boundary condition at infinity we made our contact separation mode case very easy right so we go to mesh and we have to do the mesh and continue with the study so we use the same mesh normal and physics control and again it may take a while to do the mesh okay the meshing is done now and we have to continue to study for the study we are not going to change anything we can change the gap by parametric sweep so all we can do is just click on compute and solve so let's do it and wait for the solving okay so the problem is also solved for the contact separation mode we can go back to the animation and look at the results if you want however again we want to find the open circuit voltage in the first solution and we need to derive the values for that you see that right in order to find the open circuit condition i'm gonna go to the derived values i'm not gonna touch the other things that we defined i'm gonna right click and then average line average and then in here i'm gonna select the back of the bottom electrode and then we're good i'm gonna close i also want to delete these tables because i'm not gonna use them again so in here in this line average i can put it as bottom electrode and what we are gonna find is the electric potential right that's it and then we click on evaluate and as you see, we have to change it to parametric sweep. Okay, so we are good. Now I want to use another line average. And for this case, I want to use the other one or the other electrode, right? So let me just do parametric sweep and then go and select the back of the other electrode, right? And what we are going to use is the electric potential. And as you see, we have parametric sweep and evaluate. So we got two tables. One of them shows the electric potential on the bottom electrode. And the other one shows the electrode output or the electric potential on top electrode. So I'm going to use top electrode here. Right? That's it. Okay, now let's keep these two tables and I'm going to right click and add table to export and same thing with this, add table to export because I'm going to export them and use the numbers in other software to plot the voltage or the open circuit voltage. Okay, so for this one, you can simply name it and browse and save it on your computer. I'm gonna do it for myself okay I'm gonna show you what we have in the table in table 1 we have these numbers as you see changing with Y and for table 2 we get these numbers right that's it I'm gonna export them and I will show you later okay as you see this is the result for the electric potential on the bottom electrode and I'm gonna show you the top electrode as well and here is the top electrode okay let's keep them and i'm going to use them later okay so we are done with the results of the open circuit condition and i'm going to plot the open circuit voltage later on using the two tables i showed you let's do the short circuit condition quickly so we go back we disable our floating potentials on the back electrodes and we enable our ground conditions right 
to remember. Let's see what boundaries are grounded. For simplicity, I'm gonna go back, cloud model, and zoom in and see what boundaries are grounded. So as you see, we have grounded the back of the top electrode, and also we have grounded the back of the bottom electrode. So we are all set, no change on the floating potential on the contact or the surface charge density on the dielectric. And also we have the ground on the infinite domain. So we go to mesh and this is our mesh. And then we go to parametric sweep and then compute. That's it. Okay, so the short circuit condition is also solved for the contact separation mode. I want to plot the transfer charge in short circuit condition. Okay, to do this, I want to go here, derive values, and then line integration, and then that's it. And then I'm gonna select the top of the electrode, right, and also parametric solution. I want to delete these tables for simplicity. And if here I write this as QSC, on contact and separation. It gives us the short circuit transfer charge under contact separation mode. And what are we gonna add is our surface charge density as usual times the depth, which is five millimeters, right? That's it. We're good. You can click on evaluate and wait for calculations. Now we can go to 1D plot group, right click, table graph, and table one, and plot. There we go. This is what we got, right? And as you see, it is near to 200 picocoulombs. If I want to adjust it, let's go back in here, and also times one P12, because I want to show it in pico coulombs, and we can also delete this table and evaluate again. And that's it. We go to this plot, table graph, and plot, and there you go. This is exactly the same as the result we have in our presentation. I will show it to you later. Right? As you see, the short circuit transfer chart in the paired electrode or contact separation quickly goes to nearly 200 picocoulombs, right? So we got these results. Okay, there is one thing left that we didn't plot yet, which is the open circuit voltage for the contact separation mode from our previous solving. So I'm gonna do it now. As you may remember, we got these results for the top electrode electric potential and also in another file, we exported the results for the bottom electrode, right? Which is this one. Okay, now we have the potential of the two electrodes and in order to find the open circuit voltage, we have to find the difference between them to get the voltage as the potential difference. You can use different software to do this or you can even do it in console if you can. But for simplicity, I'm gonna use MATLAB, which is a very powerful software to process numbers for this purpose. Now I can simply copy these values because I don't have so many numbers and I don't need to import the file. And in MATLAB, I can simply define V in button and then copy here and make V on top and copy from another table that I exported. that's it and now because we have the same column for the y we can simply plot any of them for example v on top the first column and then we find the difference between the second columns which are actually our potential values right i'm gonna use v of bottom minus of top. In fact, this function plots potential difference with respect to y. Let's do that and compare it with our results. 
there you go this is plotted and this is what we got i want to open my slides and show the results we got for the open circuit voltage of the contact separation mode so as you see we got this curve exactly same as our reference so in this study we will be able to model both the single electrode and the contact separation modes and we got the same results as our reference i hope you enjoyed this video and learned how to model different types of triboelectric nanogenerators.